Hello everybody, I wanted to make this video just to document my own experience in uh, upgrading the firmware of my old JX10. Uh, I'm doing this in the hope that it will help somebody else with the same problem. And uh, just, just to get the information out there on, on, on what you need to do. Now, I haven't done this myself yet so this is a learning experience hopefully everything goes well and this will not turn out to be a video of how not to do things fingers crossed um anyway let's get to it as you can see i've already opened the case uh no big problems there there's uh there's two screws at the bottom um around around here uh, that you need to take out. Uh, no, wait. Actually, it's it's further this way. Yeah, slightly confused because it looks uh, narrower now that the lid is open. So you can see this uh, this piece of metal here has two holes: one up here, one down there, and there's screws at the bottom of the case that you need to uh, remove. And also uh, three screws on either side of the case. Here I have uh, these arrived via airmail recently. Let me get the camera closer. So uh, here's the 3.12 firmware chip and also the soundboard upgrades. And uh, I got these from Frederick Wekhoven. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but I'll go with that. Hopefully that's not too badly butchered and uh, I will have the appropriate links in the description of this video so you can uh, find out more about this and contact him for sales if you are interested in doing this yourself so uh, yeah that that's how that's how it goes you, you need to pluck out the old chips and put the new ones in I already spotted the uh, the soundboard once. Let me get in here. I I think it's that one over there, um, and another one at a comparable slot on the other soundboard. Now the thing that scares me here is the uh, the assigner board upgrade. Uh, and why it is so scary is because of this uh, this flat cable right here. Because I've heard that it is very fragile. And uh, I'm looking at this and it, it has pretty like sharp bend here, right here. And uh, I'm really terrified to touch it because I'm afraid it'll just break. And uh, there's uh, there's more like... As you can see, really sharp edges down there. So I've been sitting here kind of twiddling my thumbs a little on how to best approach this, approach this problem. All right, I gave up on the idea of pulling the cable out entirely because I couldn't make it move by gently pulling it and I did not want to use a whole lot of force. So I think it's gonna stay there. I did manage to loosen it up a bit and to, to make a bit more space down there where I need to go. Uh, also, just to confirm that it is indeed the lower chip that you see there. Uh, gotta get this light in there. there. You see, it's this IC6 next to it, uh, and that's the one that you need to replace. So, um, I'm just gonna try and get it out and the new one in with the white flat cable still in place. So, here we are with the flat cable removed. I tried to get to the chip without removing it, but it was just too crowded, I couldn't see what I was doing, so... I tried it again and uh, this time it came off nicely. And uh, as you can tell, let me get some light in there. I went ahead and removed the uh, the old chip. 
and uh, just a, an advice for that I uh, I used a screwdriver a flat screwdriver coming from the left side because you can see these uh, these yellow thingamajigs there here uh, you probably know what they are uh, uh, get the finger in the frame as well these here uh, they obstructed my attempts from the other side from the right side so I, I just had to come from come come at it from the left side and as you can see there's uh, a space underneath the thing so it I guess it, it's okay to use the screwdriver as kind of a crowbar to to pry it out but just do it slowly and and carefully these last legs got a little bit bent here I guess it's not too bad and I don't intend to use this anymore so I'm not too worried about it but I, I kind of hope that I would get it out intact all right the new chip is finally in place uh, the process went pretty well but there was one thing that I want to mention uh, I think that this uh, let me show you this old one the the gap between the uh, the legs was ever so slightly wider on the new chip than it was on the old one so I I had some trouble fitting it into the holes so what I ended up doing is I ever so gently pressed with my fingers these uh, these pins slightly to the inside and uh, yeah that was pretty grueling because I did not want to uh, break any of them because that would be bad but yeah after a lot of patience and a lot of time I finally managed to bend them just enough to uh, make it fit into the holes right there and uh, also I uh, I fitted this flat cable back where it belongs um, in my case it did require a little bit of force like n not not like strength but you know just to push it a little bit inside and also when I was taking it out I was slightly afraid that it, it, it's gonna break because I'm, I'm using too much force but it, it seems to have gone well I didn't see any cracks or hear any cracks or tears or anything like that so um, just to point out uh, if you didn't notice already this black uh, connector here on the board that that stays on the board that doesn't come out so you have to grab the cable and wiggle it gently out out of there so that's the way it works uh, don't don't try to pull this uh, black connector bit out also a quick note that I don't think I mentioned yet is you have to pay attention to the direction that these were in there um, there's this little notch on one side of the chip as that you can see here so take pictures and and you know Put, when you take this out put it on the table the way it was in there in the same orientation and do whatever you have to do to remember how it was in there I did notice that there's also I don't think you can see it from here but there's also um, a little notch on the chassis or like the base where this chip connects to and uh, yeah just make sure that you uh, align those little notches the way that they they were that they're on the same side that's important I hear and also a note on the soundboards I just checked that the uh, well you can see I have these two uh, two things labeled B and C in here and uh, B is the lower soundboard and C is the upper one and uh, they are uh, uh, B is the like lower is the left one and and upper is the right one here so B goes to the left and C goes to the right that's what I'm operating on 
the principle I'm operating on right now. So that's the next task. Let's see how that goes. All right, the soundboard chips have been changed finally, as you can see here. I have to say that the uh, process of getting the old ones out of there was for sure more difficult than putting the new ones back in. Um, I used a combination of just a normal screwdriver and uh, I attacked the problem from this angle, just put it in there and then just gently nudge my way a little bit. And uh, then I had, well, I, I tried to use the screwdriver from the other side, but as you can see, there's really no room to fit in there. So I thought um, I have these leftover pieces of metal from computer cases. So I, I used this as kind of a gouge or, you know, as a forklift, put it in from, from behind and then just kind of wiggled it a little bit gently. You have to be gentle with these things, preferably more gentle than I was, because I kind of botched the, uh, the C, C chip. Um, I guess you can barely see it from here. Can I get some focus on this maybe? Anyway, whether or not you can see it, there, one of these legs got kind of bent and uh, I'm not very happy about that. I believe there's a special tool for these kinds of things, for removing these chips. And uh, maybe I cheaped out a little and uh, I certainly would have been glad to have one of those. It's probably not very expensive. So if you want to make this easier on yourself, I think you should look it up and try to get one. But overall, I'm pretty excited now. I did all the things. I don't think I broke anything. I didn't notice anything obvious. So now I'll just close the lid. And uh, yeah, then, then we'll try to power it back on and see what happens. 3.12 seems right. Okay, uh, I'll have to get my headphones and check if there's actual sound coming out of it still, but so far it looks good. It, it looks really good. Uh, 3.12 is uh, the, the latest from F Frederick Vekhoven and uh, I'm pretty excited to, to try this out and see how it works with my computer and uh, for example the Behringer BCR2000 or some other generic MIDI controller. So uh, yeah, let's try. Alright, so I got my headphones and I tried it and uh, yeah, my heart really sank when I didn't hear any sound. Uh, let me put those there just for show. Um, yeah, I didn't hear anything and uh, I walked away from it for a bit to think what did I miss, what did I do wrong and uh, then I remembered reading from uh, one of these JX website resources that uh, there's a thing that uh, after you install this new EP-ROM uh, the uh, the MIDI settings might be a bit off and uh, so I went in there and yeah this upper local parameter was set to off so I'm pretty sure that was the cause of my problem. I, I set it to on. Uh, I did go through the the other ones. I can just cycle through while I talk. So um, I did go through all of these settings and I, I set them to what I thought makes sense. And uh, yeah, after that I tried again and it works as it used to be. So uh, whew, sigh of relief there. Uh, 
I thought I really made some stupid mistake and uh, I thought I killed it. I made it into a brick and yeah, uh, I'm happy that it was an easy fix though. So uh, now it's just back to making music, I guess. I'm happy and I hope uh, you found some advice from these videos uh, on your own project. So good luck with that and uh, I'll put all the relevant links into the video description, all the information that I was using while I was doing this, so you'll have the best chance to succeed when you go at it yourself. So that's it, thanks for watching and good luck, keep making music!